You know, when someone has chest pain, they automatically think it's a heart attack, okay? But according to the statistics, that's not always the case. Only 31% of those people that have angina or chest pain have this connection to the heart. And even if someone does have angina or chest pain, it doesn't mean they have a heart attack. A heart attack is a situation where you have a lack of blood flow to the heart that actually causes some damage. And so if you have chest pain, there could be something going on in the heart that's creating the pain, but not necessarily damage. However, it could create damage. And one thing you need to know about heart attacks is that out of all the heart attacks, the great majority, like 64% of heart attacks are silent. There is no symptoms whatsoever. But when someone has angina, they a lot of times have sweating, dizziness, and shortness of breath. But many times they go to the emergency room and there is nothing going on with the heart. So today we're gonna to talk about the other reasons, like 11 other reasons why you might have chest pain. If we take a look at the chest cavity. Um, you have a lot of things that are right underneath the chest cavity. You have the heart, of course, you have the lungs, you have the liver, you have the gallbladder, you have all the bile ducts, you have the pancreas, and you have ducts that kind of join with the bile ducts from the gallbladder. And then you also have the stomach. So 42% of people that have chest pain have a symptom that is related to their digestion, okay? It has nothing to do with the heart. And I'm also gonna cover the other causes that are more rare that involve the lung tissue. Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about is this thing called GERD. What is GERD? GERD is basically acid reflux. It's an advanced uh, acid reflux where the valve on the top of the stomach is not closing. And so food is regurgitating back up into the esophagus. And when that happens, it can cause uh, discomfort and chest pain because that's right underneath the sternum. And I'm gonna put some links down below of videos that I've done on every single area so you can get more information if you have this problem. But a very important question to ask if you have chest pain is, what happened just before the chest pain? Just to get a clue. Was there something you ate that you normally shouldn't be eating? Or is it some stress or whatever? The next cause of chest pain is the gallbladder, but it's not necessarily gallstones, okay? It's usually something involving the bile ducts or the little tubes that connect from the liver, that pass through the liver, that connect to the gallbladder, that go into the small intestine, that also connect with the pancreatic ducts. So the bile that is flowing through the liver that is supposed to drain into the small intestine, many times becomes thickened and develops a sludge. And that topic is something that there's not a lot of data out there, even though it's very, very common. I've done a lot of videos on it and it's a real thing. And when this bile becomes thickened because there's not enough bile, that creates all sorts of pressure in that tube and that pressure in that location is directly underneath your rib cage. In fact, many people who have costochondritis, which is inflammation in the sternum, really have a problem with their bile ducts. I mean, if you think about it, why would someone have inflammation in the cartilage next to their sternum? Unless maybe they just did a workout doing bench press and they're really sore, but what would cause this inflammation, which is directly over the sternum? It just doesn't make sense. And for those people that have never heard about this before, because you haven't watched my videos, um, the antidote is bile salts, okay? And you can get them online. And one version that works really good is called Tutka. And if you've ruled out a heart problem, okay, and it's definitely not heart related, and you end up massaging underneath the right rib cage, and I've done a video on that, I'll, I'll put that link down below and you immediately experience relief with your chest pain, chances are it's related to the digestive system. And you also ultimately have to find out what you should be eating to really correct that problem. Another cause would be something called stress. If someone has a panic attack, they usually have chest pain. There's even something called broken heart syndrome. It's an actual thing that someone experiences a loss of something, a loss of a loved one, and they end up with chest pain because of the amount of overwhelming stress. I mean, out of all the stress that someone can experience, it's the loss that creates the most impact on your physical health. And the elevation of the stress hormones, especially cortisol, that stay elevated over a long period of time become chronic and it creates a lot of destruction 
on the heart and other parts of your body, even your brain. And people can even start developing diabetes and gain weight uh, because of this chronic cortisol uh, problem that then starts elevating your blood sugars, even when you're not eating sugar. So out of all the non-heart related causes of chest pain, we have the digestive issues and then we have the stress issues, okay? Now, these next causes are very rare, but I'm gonna bring them up. Number one, a pulmonary embolism. What is that? Well, that's a uh, thrombus or a clot that ends up in your lungs. And that can definitely create uh, chest pain because it's gonna affect your breathing and circulation. All the circulation in the body actually travels through your lungs. And if there is some blockage to your lungs, you're gonna have major chest pain, and especially when you breathe in, okay? Pneumothorax. And so that basically is a collapsed lung. And so now we have this increased space between the lung and the wall of your chest. So you're usually gonna have a sharp chest pain on one side because of that. Then you have something called aortic dissection, where you have the aorta, which is a major vessel that is either tore or ruptured, okay? That is extremely dangerous, but it is also extremely rare. Then you have pneumonia, okay? That can cause chest pain, but if you have a lung infection, you're gonna know you have a lung infection with other symptoms. Uh, asthma can create chest pain. Um, just so you know, if you have asthma, there's two things I would recommend. One is vitamin D, okay? You're gonna experience relief from that. And also a very amazing breathing uh, technique. I'll put those links down below. This breathing technique can pull someone out of an asthmatic attack within minutes. Then shingles. Shingles actually is viral related and that can create chest pain as well. And then you have something called pericarditis, which is viral, where you have this inflammation around the heart, okay? Now, since a very common cause of chest pain relates to the digestive system, I highly suggest you watch this video next right here.